Today I am driving a truck into a war-torn country. I am getting ready to gather my things, eat a little breakfast, and drive a few hours and get a vehicle to bring into Ukraine. Okay, so I am on the way to Lublin. Uh, should be there fairly soon, and then we'll see how everything goes in setting up the next step. Okay, so I made it to the place in Lublin, and I think this is the car I'm taking. It's a, a Land Rover, I know that. I'll check it out. Jäger. Jägermeister. So, I have to meet up with a couple people here. Alrighty, I'm getting ready to take off with the Land Rover. And it will be very long. Hour and a half, I think, until... Well, maybe two and a half, I guess, to Lviv, so we'll see. It is 4.30, and hopefully there's not a long line at the border. I think there probably won't be because it's Easter, and I'm going to one that's not very busy. Uh, and... In 600 meters, turn right. This I've got to show... First, I've got to go in and meet the mayor of this town, uh, because there's nowhere I can print these documents that I need. The uh, Ukrainian government provides a certain series of documents in order to do what I'm doing and uh, I need to print them but it's Easter so there isn't anywhere to print anything so I'm gonna go meet the mayor of this little town on the border and they're gonna help me print it so that's kind of fun about 10 minutes from my stop in Robitsov from there to the border and when getting to the border there's actually two border crossings one of them is the Polish border and then you'll go a little bit further and then there's the Ukrainian border it's split into two because it's an international line and at the Ukrainian border then they're gonna search the vehicle and look at all my paperwork and uh, hopefully there's not much of a line because I'd really like to get to Lviv before it's too late once it's 11 p.m. that's curfew time and curfew uh, well, this obviously means you can't be on the street this looks an awful lot like Wisconsin. I'm going to turn this. Look at that. Little soybean fields. Okay, so I'm leaving the city hall with my docks and hoping I can do the car. All right, here we are. Slava Ukraini. Got about an hour and 40 minutes. I will make it before the 11 o'clock curfew, so that is very good. If it were after the curfew, I would have had to take it to a totally different place, and it would have been a little intense uh, with multiple military checkpoints and stuff. Through some pretty rough terrain here. I cannot get around these trucks. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of the barriers made out of steel beams in the, the jack shape. Good, not really sure what's going on here. Looks like there was an accident. If you look in the left lane, that shadow in the road in front of the lights is a dead body. And I never really figured it out, but I think it might have been a motorcyclist or a pedestrian. Holy shit. There was a fucking person on the road. That was fucked up. What the hell was that? Understand. Uh, someone maybe was walking on the road, I don't know. But I saw someone's foot and their leg was twisted. 
All right, I just went through my first military checkpoint. And the guy, he didn't speak English, of course, I don't speak Ukrainian, and he's trying to tell me to turn the flashers on. And he's, he's making his hand open and close, and he's pointing at the lights. And I was like, yeah, yeah, turn the lights. Oh, you want me to flash the lights? And Well then, these cobblestone streets are... Cobble, cobbly, very cobbly. Well, it looks like Lviv's happening. There's people out and about everywhere. Shops open. There's not much time left before I get to my destination, and I'm really hoping to have a nice place to sleep and something to eat because I am properly hungry and thirsty and very tired. It's been a long couple drives. I don't know where I can park, and my phone doesn't work, so I can't call the dude I need to talk to. So, let's figure it out. Alright. So I'm here in Lviv at, at the address. And, well, of course I don't have the service uh, on my phone because I had a Polish SIM card. So I can't call the guy that I'm supposed to bring this vehicle to. And the place I'm at, there's a big apartment building in the back, and I think that's probably where I gotta go. I, I, what, now I'm just hanging out listening to, uh, you know, some, some what sounds like pretty legit Ukrainian hip-hop. <laughs> I dig it, I dig it, yeah, totally. It's like 5.30 a.m. and I'm sleeping in the rain room. Got my very guy, Zelensky color, <laughs> green shirt for a blanket. Uh, I've got some... First aid kits, there's, there's a whole bunch in the whole car. I used them as a pillow. Yeah. Uh, every, every hour or so I've been waking up and turning on the car to turn the heat on. I hope tomorrow I will find the guy supposed to meet and deliver the truck to. He is somewhere in the city. I thought he was going to be at this place and that I would show up and he would be there. Or that, um, or that my contact who's back in Poland would see on the, where there's a GPS, uh, there's an app we're using where it shows everybody on the team on the GPS so he can see that I'm here because the GPS works even though there's not a cellular signal for data or anything. And I guess I thought that he might call this guy and say, hey, he's there. And the guy would come and see me parked outside of the address I was given to go to. And yeah, and I, I, there was no one. Um, so, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Um, I, now I'm tired and I want to go to sleep, so I'm going. Bye. It's 7.45 a.m. and I'm pretty sure I hear air raid sirens. So, I just got up. I'm still a little disoriented. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so, 
I'm at this place, wherever this place is. And uh, I'm gonna go find a person, wherever this person is. I gotta say, you got some pretty badass radio stations in Ukraine. I was kind of jamming last night when I was just sitting here not knowing what the hell to do. And, I mean... This is, uh... Hit FM, Ukraine. It's good shit. I, uh... There was... There was a care package. Okay, now it'll be normal. There was a care package of food in, in this vehicle that I brought. And, you know, I got here in the middle of, you know, at like 10 p.m. and everything was closed. And, and so I, I had to raid it, but all there is is Oreos and sweets and shit. <laughs> and, and other things that require boiled water. So, uh, I've eaten five really good of these things, and Oreos filled with raspberry foam or whatever the hell it is, and they were okay, but I prefer the original. I really would love some hot breakfast, but you know what, I gotta remember, there's probably like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people probably have it much worse than sleeping in a vehicle and not having a legit breakfast, so I'm gonna chill with Hit FM and be happy Alright, so I just started driving to go find a place where I can get a SIM card and this, uh, this vehicle is spouting smoke like hell and it was not before. Alright, there is... Where the fuck's the window? A bunch of black smoke in the sky. And... I heard the air raid sirens when I woke up, and then at some point I heard jets, and that was only 15 minutes ago, so I wonder if that's a strike. Apparently, uh, the instructions and things weren't, weren't clear, there was misunderstandings, and they thought I stole the car, uh, but I, I followed the instructions I was given, and slept in the car, and waited at the place. So, I guess I don't know what more I could have done. Uh, didn't have any phone, any internet, and I told everyone that. Uh, but it seemed like everybody was lined up and everything was supposed to be fine. <laughs> so yeah, I came to where I was supposed to come and I have this app where it tracks my location and even without uh, mobile service, the GPS on the phone works, so I would have thought that they would have seen me at this point and sent sent someone here, but anyhow, it was just a misunderstanding. So hopefully next time it's uh, easier and we can just get this taken care of and I can go go back and take care of the, the next mission. All right, so I'm over by the bus station, train station. Uh, apparently that was, there was a couple of missile strikes at one of them, so we had to park farther away and now that's going off again. All right, so I got on this bus. And then we got out of the city, got on another bus, <laughs> came back into the city. And now the bus driver's going the wrong way, down a one-way street, <laughs> blocking two intersections. Well, we're 
like diagonal in the middle of the intersection. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, at the Ukraine border of Poland. About to get back on the bus because, well, it was hotter than hell and humid in there because it's a double decker cranked full of people, no windows. But it's cold and snowing ish out here. Whew. I want to go to sleep. <laughs> I haven't slept barely at all for two days. I'm having these delicious Ukrainian cookies with my friend. Mm. He shared with me. What's your name again? What's your name? I'm Jesse. No, uh, <coughs> my name is Ivan. Ivan. Hi, ah, Ivan. Ivan. Me yeah. and Ivan here having some good cookies. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. Been on the bus for six hours. It's an hour and a half ride. Right? Uh, and there's a lower deck too. There's like a hundred people on this bus, so it's a lot of passports to check. But luckily, there aren't any cars in front of us. Alrighty, just went to the bathroom, and much to my surprise, the bus moved ahead 20 feet. All right, so I guess technically that's, well, right in between Ukraine and Poland, so bye-bye, Ukraini. And uh, hello, Polska. Oh, shit, I suppose not if I gotta leave it up. <laughs> uh, it's the bus. <laughs> it's, going, it's going backwards, though. This way, that way. <laughs> okay, we're moving. <laughs> right, some new friends. <laughs> After seven hours, I got it back. It is Monday. The. 18th, I think. Uh, it's been a rough couple days. I don't know. 15 hours of driving or something. Slept in the back seat of a car and woke up to an air raid and some missiles. So that was the first. Fortunately, I was over, I don't know, over a, like maybe a mile away or something. So, uh, and in an area that wasn't. There was nothing there to target. Uh, 